Every month I sit down and do an income and expenses report. I figure out how much money I spent and how much money I made in my business. And granted, my business encompasses a lot of things. But what was exciting was in the month of February 2022, I made over $5,000, which has been a goal of mine for a very long time. Now, keeping in mind that that's $5,000 gross, not net. March 2022, is my two-year anniversary of being self-employed and right before that anniversary is when I hit a huge income goal. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I want to talk about how I made that $5,000, where that $5,000 was coming from, the realities of being self-employed, and kind of how far I've come in the past two years. If you don't know who I am, my name is Mandy Lynn. I'm an author, book cover designer, and the creator of the Book Launch Planner, and I post weekly videos on the business of being an author. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, comment down below, subscribe, and hit the bell notification icon. So as a little backstory, in March of 2020, I was laid off from my job, unrelated to everything else that was going on in the world. The transition from working full-time to working for myself full-time was not an easy transition because I was not ready to make that transition yet. In an ideal world, I'd work part-time and be self-employed part-time until eventually I'd be self-employed full-time. And obviously, it didn't work out that way, but we're here today and we're fine. At the very very start of being self-employed, I actually made a lot of money. I was super motivated and ready to go, and at some times, I made more money than I did at my full-time job that I was laid off from. But as time went on, I did find myself less and less motivated, and this was becoming a huge problem because I was just getting sidetracked by everything. I always am notorious for having a lot on my plate, and being self-employed was no exception because I just assumed that I would have more time to do more things so I put more things on my plate and those things didn't necessarily always make money. This meant by the end of 2020 I was becoming really unfocused and doing a lot of different things and my book writing was feeling kind of unhopeful and this was for a lot of mental health reasons that I've talked about in the past. So if you want to watch a full video on where I go into the reasons why I stopped writing one of my previous books and started writing my next now published book, Meet Me at the Summit. I will leave that video linked down below because it's kind of a complicated story. But before we go any further, I want to give a huge shout out to today's sponsor, BetterHelp. Whether you're self-employed or not, taking care of your mental health is huge in terms of your productivity and of course your overall happiness. Personally, I've been in and out of therapy since I was a senior in high school and this is just due to anxiety. I at times have really, really bad anxiety and the past two years has been no exception. BetterHelp is online therapy and when you get started, you can sign up and fill out the little survey and they will match you with your licensed professional therapist. Once you're matched up with your therapist, you can contact them at any time through the BetterHelp website and then you can also schedule appointments so you can video chat with them. There's no long drive to the therapist's office and there's no awkward waiting in the waiting room to talk to your therapist. It's all done in the comfort of your home. If you want to get started with BetterHelp and start talking to a therapist today, then be sure to use my link down below, which is betterhelp.com slash Lynn. Thank you again so much to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. I don't think I talked about it too much on here, but at the end of 2020, I actually started getting panic attacks again. So I did end up seeing a therapist in doing like online therapy, which was super helpful to me. And the reasoning for that was a lot of things. Again, the reasons behind my panic attacks and anxiety I talk about in that other video that will be linked down below. But all you guys need to know right now is that I was I was scared and I was stressed. <laughs> and being self-employed makes you even more stressed, especially if you're used to having a full-time income and now you don't have that anymore. And even now, 
I just had my biggest income month ever, which is great and I celebrated it and I'm so happy to have that, but I also know that that doesn't mean it's gonna be easy from here on out. I, I am painfully aware of the fact that that just means that it is possible and I have the motivation to work hard to earn that again and again, but money like that doesn't come unearned. And that's perhaps the biggest difference between being self-employed and being like employed and having a corporate job. Because I know for a fact that at my corporate job, I could get away with doing less than half the work that was required of me. Like for sure could get away with it and would still have the same paycheck every single week. But when you're self-employed and if you take time off or if you have a bad day, a bad week, or even a bad month, the effect is shown in your income. So basically, at the start of 2021, I kind of had to sit back and shift. I had to take a shift into focusing more on my health, and that's both mental health and physical health. And I still have to sit down and do that every now and then because I think the hardest part about being self-employed is just the stress levels. It's not the work that is stressful, it's the fear of not being able to do the work that's stressful. I feel like I'm constantly like, every morning, I'm just like, oh, my to-do list is so long. And I love what I do, but I'm also aware of how much more stressful it is now than it was when I had a like job that had a consistent income because nothing about being self-employed is consistent. Now at the beginning of 2021, I knew I had to make changes and a large part of that was having more structure and that meant, you know, having scheduled me time where I was just relaxing and scheduled work time where I was actually getting stuff done. And I'm still working on that today. I'm definitely really good at my scheduled work time, but I'm really bad at making sure that I take time for myself, or sometimes when I am taking time for myself, I take a lot of time for myself. So I'm just really un inconsistent. And I say this because I want it to be super clear to you guys that there's no feeling that you finally figured it out. Like you're always going to shift your workflow and shift your structure. And I guess that's the best part and the worst part of being self-employed is that you have the ability to constantly shift, but at the same time, because you have that ability to constantly shift, it's really easy to fall off the bandwagon. So to this day, I still sit down and I'm constantly restructuring my days and I kind of block out when I work on certain things and how long I work on certain things and also trying to make sure that there's time for myself every day as well. Well. So since I'm talking about blocking off times, this is where I want to talk about multiple streams of income because if you ask me, that's the biggest key factor in having a great income when you're self-employed. Because like I've said about a million times now, your income is going to be super inconsistent. One month you may sell 10 books, the next month you may sell 100 books. And that's basically how it works for anything, not just book sales, but anything. If you're a freelancer, if you do some sort of other service, or maybe you're a YouTuber and you have AdSense money, it's all all over the place. Graphic design is my main form of income. I design book covers and I format books for publishing. I work with authors. I sometimes also work with small publishers. Basically, I do whatever I got to do to pay the bills. And it's my main form of income because from a single client, I can make anywhere from 200 to 600 dollars or more depending on how much work they have for me which is pretty different from the three dollars I make per book sale and speaking of which my second form of income is my books so I have quite a few books published right now I have all my novels essence I am mercy she's not here and meet me at the summit and hopefully we'll have another novel published later this year then I have the marketing for authors book series which I publish with my co-author Bethany Atazada and then I also have a children's book but that book doesn't really sell it was more just for fun. The more books you publish, the more money you make because you'll learn very quickly as an author, you're not going to sell a whole lot of books. But if you publish a whole lot of books and you sell a little of each book, it adds up to more money in your pocket every single month. So am I making a decent form of income from my books? Yes, but nothing like super significant that would actually, you know, 
pay the bills. My third form of income is my YouTube channel. So you guys get to watch my YouTube channel for free. And then there are ads on these videos. And for every ad that is watched and clicked and so on, I make money through Google AdSense, which is really great because I love making YouTube videos and I am happy to provide this content to you guys. But it's also really nice to get the paycheck from it. My fourth form of income is affiliate marketing. So this is something that I've gotten into more so in the past couple of months. I've definitely been doing it for years, but never really making sales. But basically, I refer you guys to different products that I like, and I have an affiliate link. And if you click on that link, then I make a small portion as a commission. I love it because I only refer products to you guys that I love and trust. And my hope is that you guys love the products that I refer to you as well. And it's a win win for everyone. It's a win for me because I get the commission. It's a win for you guys because you discovered a new product and it's a win for the company because they get sales as well. My fifth stream of income is my business Stone Ridge stickers. So I design and print stickers and I ship them out. This is also part of my planner that I created the book launch planner. So I have the planner that you can buy. I have the stickers for the planners or just stickers that you can use in general. I have a sticker subscription called stick together monthly where you can get stickers mailed to you every single month to decorate your planner or your bullet journal. Honestly, I really love my sticker business and it's grown a lot just in the past year and I can't wait to see how it grows more in the future. And my last form of income is through sponsorships. So thank you again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. This is something that's newer to me and you guys may have noticed that on my YouTube channel, but it's honestly a huge, massive help to me as a creator because while I do make money through through Google AdSense, the amount of time and effort that goes into every video just doesn't really add up to the amount that you make through Google AdSense. And yes, I would still be making these videos either way, but any sort of extra money that I can make really helps me throw more time and effort into these videos for you guys. So those are my six forms of income. And like I've mentioned many times, the income amount comes and goes every single month. Some months, my sticker business is doing really awesome and it's thriving in other months it's not some months I have a lot of sponsorships lined up on YouTube in other months I don't have any and this is why I like multiple streams of income it allows things to kind of even out a little bit and it also allows things to grow so for me at the beginning Stone Ridge stickers wasn't very profitable because the business was just starting out but I was able to invest time and money into it and to growing that business because I had income coming from other places. Stone Ridge stickers is actually a very passive form of income once I get these stickers actually designed. It's kind of like writing books in that way where once you write the book, you can sell that book forever. Once I design my stickers, I can sell them forever. My goal long term is actually to try and grow my sticker business as much as possible because things like freelancing and graphic design is very, very time consuming. So even though it's my biggest form of income, it's the thing that eats up most of my day. So in order to make more money, I have to invest more time, which means I have to take time from something else out of my day. But the truth is having multiple streams of income doesn't mean you're going to automatically make $5,000 in one month. So how exactly do you make $5,000 in one month when you're self-employed? To figure out the answer to this, we're gonna take the $5,000 I earned and per break it down percentage-wise to see which stream of income was making me the most money. If you want the full breakdown of the exact numbers and exactly how much money I made, be sure to join as a YouTube member because when you join as a YouTube member, I actually do an income report every single month where I tell you guys how much money I made, where that money was coming from. I also do some goal setting with you guys. So be sure to join as a YouTube member that will be linked down below. But again, today we're just going to do a percentage report so you can kind of get an idea for what a good month for me looks like. So let's break it down. We have affiliate sales that is 3.5% of my income, book sales, that is 4.4% of my income, my YouTube channel, which is 6.5% of my income, my store, Stone Ridge Stickers, is 17.7% of my income, 
My graphic design freelancing is 29.2% of my income and sponsorships are actually 38.7% of my income. And I will say this number is changing constantly. Like I said, some months I don't have any sponsorships. So when I don't have any sponsorships, as you can imagine, those numbers skew a lot. I will let you know that graphic design and my store, Stone Ridge Stickers, is almost always my consistent top two income earners. So those are the ones that I tend to rely on the most. And if those don't perform well, that's when I know I'm gonna make less money that month. The two biggest factors in making an income as someone who is self-employed is your time and persistence. Because these income streams are streams that have been here basically since I've become self-employed. I've had sponsorships in the past, but not consistently. I did sell my stickers, but not consistently. When you're self-employed, you're constantly building your business and expanding, but that doesn't happen overnight. For me, it took about two years, and honestly, I'm still gonna continue to grow and expand until I feel kind of more comfortable and less stressed every single month about worrying about making an income. Because that's the thing, I've had a lot of people ask like, how do you know when you've made it? And I don't think there's ever a time where you sit back and you say to yourself, yes, I've made it. And maybe it will feel that way from the outside because I'm sitting here and telling you guys, oh my God, I made $5,000 last month. But I, while that number is great, that's not where I wanna be. And I also am aware that in order to make that $5,000, I had to work my butt off. I have been stressed, like really stressed, but I really wanted to see a bigger income, so I was taking more clients and I was working harder on YouTube videos. I was doing a lot of work behind the scenes that you guys will probably never be aware of because it's just impossible to show you guys everything. And also, while the $5,000 I made last year is amazing, that's not the money I get to take home. That $5,000 is before expenses, it's before before taxes, it's before I put money aside in my business savings account. That's all all separate and more money that has to come out before I physically see it in my pocket. My goal is actually to make $7,000 before taxes and all that, which means after taxes and expenses and putting money aside in savings, that the money that goes into my pocket is closer to $5,000 because that's always been my goal is to make a $5,000 paycheck every month with my business. Once I hit that milestone, I would like to say, oh, I've made it, but I also know that a huge goal is to make my income as passive as possible. And let me tell you, it's not passive whatsoever right now. I'm gonna be honest, what I'm doing right now and the workload I have right now is not sustainable, which is why in the future I wanna lean into things more passive. But I know right now I have to work super hard. And I know that the harder I work now, the less hard I might have to work later on in the future. But that is it for today's video. I know it's a little different than the recent videos that I've been doing because it was more or just a sit down, talk to you guys sort of video where I just tell you about the honest truth of how I've been feeling in the past two years. But I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. Again, if you wanna try BetterHelp, use my link down below. The website is betterhelp.com slash Mandy Lynn. If you want access to exclusive videos and those income reports I was telling you about, be sure to join as a YouTube member. Otherwise, I will see you guys all next week.